as people come to the museum, they'll come up to the fifth floor, they'll come out of the elevator, they're gonna come around a corner and then I think be quite surprised by this space completely opening up. And then really what they'll see are these various projectors uh, that uh, bring and recreate this work, uh, Munich Depression. This actually was a physical reality. Its genesis was in a project that Michael Heiser undertook in 1969 in, on the outskirts of Munich, Germany. He wanted to, to create this depression in a part of, of the outskirts of, of Munich that they found. And so the negative space is what it is, uh, was 100 feet across and 16 feet deep. And it lasted for about two to three weeks and then it was filled in. Michael Heiser was interested uh, in it because when you stood inside of it and you looked up at the horizon, you lost the sense of the edge of the depression and it just kind of melded into the horizon and he uses words that there was no edge, there was no beginning, it's evanescent. And so he wanted to capture that and that's what he did on film. In terms of the physical piece, in addition to the six images, which are glass slides, there are six projectors. And in 1970, we contacted an inventor, engineer, multi-talented person named Maris Ambitz, who designed and built these six projectors. The entire piece, actual size Munich Ready, was given to the Whitney in 1996 by Virginia Dwan. And um, I, what I've been told is that we were a candidate to receive this because we had such a large open space at the Breuer Building. And even though it was a large open space, it wasn't big enough to do this piece. It really resisted, to a certain extent, being shown. It, you know, it's always an interesting issue about what land art is. Usually speaking, many of these pieces are represented through photographs because they exist elsewhere. What's so fantastic about this piece mm -hmm is that it actually exists only here. So what you see is the work.